Coming up on show 895, Tesla is getting ready to unveil self-driving subscription packages. Stick around, I'll tell you more. Plus, you can buy a Rimac. The emergency services love EVs. And what the heck is a dry electrode? Well, this will be the week that we all learn a little bit more. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily, the edition for Monday 21st of September. My name is Martin Lee, and I go through every EV story so you don't have to. Well, Tesla is preparing to launch a new self-driving monthly subscription based on an update to its mobile app that has been leaked, and it's putting a deadline on the newly reintroduced enhanced autopilot package, says Electrek. Yes, if you haven't heard, Tesla are making it easy to get a few of the functions. I reported this on on Friday's podcast. If you haven't caught up with uh, Friday's edition last week on show uh, 894, I won't recap the whole thing. But basically, rather than go the whole hog and spend eight grand, more or less, depending on where you're buying it, to get... All of the full self-driving features, well, they're bringing it back. Enhanced autopilot. They've gone back to the future, and they've brought back the halfway house. And so if you don't want to spend the whole eight grand, you can spend it like four grand or something, three and a half, uh, depending depending on where you are, uh, pounds, dollars, etc. And if you're an existing Tesla owner, but you don't, this is not for new buyers, but if you're an existing Tesla owner, and you've always thought, ah, man, I'd like the extra features, but I don't want to spend all the, the full amount, you can now go halfway. So you can get lane change and summon and auto park. It's called Enhanced Autopilot. You can do it from within the app and you can tick the box and click on buy now. And you know, if you haven't got the full eight grand, you can spend half that and, well, get half the features. Uh, some would say, as we are a couple of weeks away from the end of the quarter, when Tesla uh, traditionally are in a bit of a rush to make sure that they have really rinsed every cent out of the quarter they possibly can. Uh, It's an interesting way to uh, offer existing owners something which they might want to take them up on. But let's get to the story today. Subscription packages look like they are coming as of the end of this offer in a couple of weeks' time to full self-driving. Now, Elon did confirm that they were thinking about this option uh, towards the end of the year. He said, uh, with the full self-driving packages price back into focus with the enhanced autopilot package on Friday being announced, we now see evidence that the subscription launch will be imminent. While Tesla has had codes to prepare for a new subscription model for a while, this new update to the app brings us closer towards hitting the subscribe button and maybe paying for it monthly and switching it on and switching it off as you need full self-driving. When confirming plans to offer a monthly subscription to access the features, Elon Musk did say that buying the full self-driving package will remain the best option financially. But with all respect, it's not the best option if you only want it for a month. If you spend 11 months of the year pootling around town and then go on a two or three week road trip and really want all of the autopilot, sorry, full self-driving features it would make sense to grab it for a month or possibly two or something like that. I mean, what's it going to be? A hundred bucks, 150 bucks a month? Sure. If you want this all of the time and you're going to have the car for three or five years, it would make sense. Probably. You run your own numbers rather than spending that money monthly to subscribe to it. The other thing as well is leasing. Now, lots of people do, of course, lease or get their cars on finance, but particularly leasing where you pay your monthly fee and you just give the car back at the end and you move on to a new agreement, right? So it's never really your car. You you know, leasing is obviously there's different ways of doing it, but you can think of it like an expensive long-term rental. And at the end of it, back the car goes. Why would you add eight grand onto the purchase price of the car when that changes your monthly leasing payments when actually you could just subscribe to full self-driving for the time that you need it because your car is going back at the end of it. So why pay for that feature when the car's not really yours? It's a really smart way for those who aren't you know, in the ecosystem to get some recurring revenue out of them. Like Recurring revenue is just gold. If you can get that out of people, whether it's a Netflix, a Spotify, a full self-driving, it makes sense. Now, there are some people who will want to own this, but I wouldn't, for instance. Like, we went on a long journey today, and it was an hour. <laughs> you know, that I don't do a long commute. I don't 
we don't go too many places. So we drove for an, an hour each way today to see my wife's parents. And that for us is a long journey these days. I just don't need those kind of features. But there are plenty of people who that for them is popping, you know, five minutes up the road. Now is nothing. And in which case, we can make driving easier, less, uh, less work to do, let the car take the strain a little bit. So... You know, uh, you make you run your own numbers on that, but I would certainly, if I had the option, and then I had some nice long road trips planned, uh, maybe some holidays, uh, maybe some cross-border driving, of course, absolutely give me the full, full package. I'll happily pay for a month for that and uh, and just make that nice long road trip a lot easier. Love to know your thoughts on this story and any story that we cover on the podcast. What we have next on the show is the only Rimac... Number one, not the new one, but the original Rimac Concept 1 on sale right now. The Rimac Concept 1 is an ultra-rare electric hypercar, and yes, Richard Hammond <clears throat> did rather famously drive one off the side of a cliff, and thankfully he was okay, but the car, it didn't make it. In 2017, only eight of them were built, and so seven of them remain. It's an incredibly rare chance for someone in the world right now, maybe listening to this podcast to purchase one. Well, for $1.6 million, uh, electric speed isn't cheap, says the Drive website. Uh, the Rimac One has a 90 kilowatt hour battery, four hub motors, 1,224 horsepower, and actually, it'll do 0 to 60 in under two and a half seconds. It'll do 220 miles an hour top speed. And there's not much information on what the car will finally sell for, but this particular model has 100 miles on the clock. It's basically been driven around the car park a couple of times and then buried in cotton wool and nobody allowed to breathe on it. These things, increasingly with classic cars and modern classics, they're never driven. It's a real shame, but they're just an investment. You know, it's it's like someone buying jewellery and never wearing it. So, I don't know. I think the kind of person that buys this not exactly going to be adding too many miles to it. I think we'll see it for sale in a few years' time, and it'll be exactly the same mileage. A real shame, but what do you reckon? If it went for $2 million, I mean, Bugattis are going... Bugatti Veyron, as I found out recently, cost seven hundred grand new, and they're about $2.5 million now for a six-year-old one! Uh, so with thousands of miles on the clock. So look, a Rimac 1, it could sell for anything, depending on, you know, who's buying that day. But uh, do you want it? I'll pop a link in the show notes if you fancy putting your bid in. Well, the UK Rescue Services Police and Fire buying more EVs. Uh, Peugeot is seeing growing demand from the emergency services for electric vehicles. The French company said 13% of the cars ordered by the emergency services were all electric, with the E208 among the best sellers to serve in the British emergency services, according to Electrive. The new E208 was only out in January, and the police force and fire service are loving these. They're buying them for a variety of reasons. Also, uh, the E208, uh, the partner, the expert, the boxer, uh, and many of them all electric as well, and Peugeot doing a brisk business uh, with those services. I've seen a few electric police cars flying around in London, normally the BMW i3, so maybe I'll see a few more Peugeots uh, with the blue lights on top. Moving on, uh, this week we are going to be talking a lot about Tesla uh, this Investor Day and the Battery Day, which is really the thing that everyone's you know excited about, it is reaching fever pitch. So, you know, if you want to go and listen to hours and hours and hours of podcasts out there from people speculating what'll what'll be in Tesla's presentation, you are you know more than able to do that and hit YouTube for thousands of hours of videos made by bloggers who will want to uh, tell you they know what's happening on battery day. But let me tell you about a slightly different story. The quality of lithium-ion battery cells depends on the electrode layers. These store the energy in a battery. Both the anode and the cathode material are applied at the moment in a thin layer of water-based or solvent-based paste onto a conducting foil made of copper on the anode and aluminium on the cathode. Researchers 
of KIT's Thin Film Technology Group have developed this coating process that allows electrodes to be produced in less time than with traditional methods, says Charge DVs. Now, the focus on energy-efficient drying techniques, so uh, the electrode is, is wet, right? It's how it's made. And speeding up the drying process and optimal management of that moisture can, along that process and the drying uh, time, mean higher power and better efficiency and lower cost. Well, Dr. Philip Schaffer says higher coating speeds are particularly attractive when drying time can be reduced and the expensive drying line doesn't have to be extended. But what if there's no drying time at all? And that leads me on to Tesla's battery date. So while that that study that we've just talked about of a group of researchers trying to work out ways to, 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 to reduce the drying time. But what about a dry electrode completely? Well, as per Tasmanian reporting this, currently batteries use a, a, a wet slurry technology. And they, they make this wet slurry and it coats the electrode foils for the battery. They mix a toxic solvent with some binder and some carbon with the active material. And then they run it through a drying line like we just talked about. And those drying lines are hundreds of feet long, consuming loads of energy. In contrast, a binder, the carbon material and the active material are mixed up for a dry electro technology. And this is what Maxwell have been working on until... Tesla bought them. And they've still been working on that, I imagine, uh, probably at an even faster rate since the Tesla acquisition of their company and the technology they had for mixing up this dry electrode technology, this, this, this mixture, resulting in like a dough or like a bubblegum-like substance, which runs through the machine, similar to an extruder. One of the benefits of using a, what is known as dry battery technology is that it decreases the degradation. It increases the energy density, and it can speed up the process. Not waiting for the drying to happen, it can speed up the process by up to 16 times. That's night and day. And from the UK Guardian newspaper, they say that Patrick Hummel, who is an uh, UBS analyst, said he was expecting news of dry electrodes at Tesla's battery day. Uh, they'll be produced with a simplified manufacturing process that doesn't require energy-intensive drying before the electrodes are then fitted into the batteries. So the rewards for developing that technology were enormous for an EV maker, uh, removing some of the obstacles of breaking uh, the stranglehold of fossil fuels. Dry electrodes are expected to deliver gains in energy density up to 50% more in time, and they'll be cheaper to make. And this could allow Tesla to achieve Elon's aim of eradicating ethically questionable cobalt from Tesla's batteries as well. I'll pop a link to all those stories in the show notes if you want to read more. Consider yourself up to date on dry electrodes part one, but I'm predicting we'll be talking a lot more about things like lithium-ion phosphate batteries. These are the ones without cobalt in, very stable, low energy density, not very sexy, used in buses quite a lot, but I predict they'll be coming to all Model 3s and Model Ys in the US, yeah, because they're in China right now, but adding that new battery chemistry to the base models to make them even cheaper. And, of course, we have the new Tesla cells using some of this new technology that we've talked about today uh, for the more high performance, if you like, or the, the areas that Tesla need to put these batteries in, like trucks and roasters and plaid model S's, etc. So many, many things we could talk about for battery day, but plenty of people are doing a good job of doing that. So I wanted to talk about that because that, to me, is the key of understanding what's all the fuss about. Well, it's potentially a, if they can get it right at scale, a night and day improvement on how they make cells and if they can do it quicker and cheaper with more energy density well, it's two things you either make more money or you reduce the price of the cars or maybe a little bit of both we'll wait and see eh? all right let's move on charge points are getting closer to going public uh, charge point is one of the oldest and largest ev charging networks nearing a deal to go public they're doing it with another spac an spac this time 
Uh, the Switchback Energy Acquisition Corporation is the name of the company that they will do a reverse merger with. The deal for ChargePoint would value the company around two billion US dollars. Announced early this week, they say we'll see if that rumor comes true. Uh, what's a SPAC? What, what is an SPAC? Uh, it's uh, an IPO, so it's a a publicly uh, an, an initial public offering so that anyone can invest in it, but you don't know at the time what you're investing in. It's a shell company, and it uses the IPO, so they can they can IPO very, very quickly, and they can use debt. They can, and, But the point is, they have to acquire a company within two years, and at that point, the investors are told, after investing blind, oh, by the way, we're spending your money on ChargePoint. Happened recently with Nikola. Happened recently with Fisker. They did a reverse merger with Spartan Energy, didn't they? And it's a way of getting a stock listed publicly very, very quickly because all the hard work is done. The IPO is done. You do a reverse merger, then you just and then you're off and away. So lots of advantages. It's a bit like the investment du jour of 2020. Been a funny old year, and actually. I've never heard the phrase a SPAC before now, but I'm more than familiar with uh, this way of getting your company publicly listed very, very quickly. And you know what? People are making a ton of money in some cases, and so, you know... Go for your life. Right, final story. The Golf GTE has been reviewed. Uh, They say that packing a plug-in hybrid powertrain of 112 horsepower electric motor and a 147 power one horsepower 1.4 litre turbocharged engine, you can do the 0 to 62 sprint in 6.7 seconds and do 140 miles an hour top speed. And that's why car scoops say the Golf GTE is a car worth looking at. Compared with its predecessor, the new Golf GTE has doubled the battery size. It has a 13 kilowatt hour unit taking five hours to charge on a basic AC charger with the onboard charger. It'll do 37 miles, that's 60 kilometers on all electric range, and go as as fast as 81 miles an hour or 130 kilometers an hour just on electric power. Can the new generation of Golf GTE basically be considered a plug-in version of the Mark 8 GTI. Well, it's quick and it's fun and it's got batteries and if you only need a few electric miles a day, could be the solution. Not for me. I wouldn't go I wouldn't go to a hybrid now that I've gone full electric, but for many people who don't want to make the jump now or for various reasons just want that security blanket of an engine I really, really do like VW's implementation of the GTE cars as Passat as well as around as as well as the Golf, and I really, really like them. Well, that's your show for today. Thank you for listening. Get in contact with what you think now of any of the topics we covered off today. Email hello at evnewsdaily.com. Leave a comment on the YouTube show. We have a new premium partner name to add to the list this week and another patreon producer to add i will mention their name very soon as we head towards the end of the month and heading towards show 900 uh, it'll be funnily enough show 899 will be this friday and so next monday i'm gonna take a week off funnily enough so show 900 won't be a week today uh, we are gonna go uh, for the first time this year And for the first time ever as a family, actually, away for Monday to Friday next week. So your advance notice, uh, the podcast, uh, will be on pause while we take a holiday next week, if we still can, if there's no lockdown, fingers crossed. And so show 900 will actually be two weeks today. But plans are afoot for something special for you. Thank you very much to our premium partners, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, Porsche of the Village in Cincinnati, Audi of Cincinnati East, Volvo Cars of Cincinnati East, NationalCarCharging.com, thank you, and AlohaCharge.com, and also Derek, or Derek Riley from the EV Review Island YouTube channel. Good man. Uh, Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And do remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.